Welcome to the Repro Review Show. I am your host, Doug. On this show, we're going to be talking about games that are released on reproduction cartridges, which are primarily games that came out overseas and never made their way to North America and were translated by fans, or games that were entirely made by fans. Our first episode is going to be on a very topical game, the legendary Star Fox 2. Star Fox was a revolutionary flight game following a team of pilots for the planet Corneria. Led by Fox McCloud, the team charged against the invading army of the evil Andross. By Fox's side is Falco Lombardi, Peppy Hare, and Slippy Toad. Together, but mostly Fox, they liberate the Lilat system and bring Andross to justice. Personally, Star Fox was one of my favorite games growing up. The 3D polygon technology was groundbreaking at the time, and handled much better than a lot of the on-rail games of that nature. It was easy to pick up, but challenging to master. But most importantly, it was so much fun. Star Fox 2 was a sequel made by Nintendo after Star Fox was a huge hit. There are many videos out there to explain why the game was cancelled, even though it was essentially a completed game, but my favorite explanation comes from the gaming historian, so I'll put that link in the video in the description. But, the basics of it is that Nintendo wanted to keep the 3D technology separate from the Super Nintendo so that it could be much more of a distinct feature for the Nintendo 64, which was about to be released. Thus, Star Fox 2 became something of a legend. The game that almost was. But fortunately for hardcore fans, a copy of the game was leaked and reproduction cartridges became available. And now, Star Fox 2 is finally seeing an official release through the SNES Classic, more than 20 years after the original release date. Well, better late than never, I suppose. Before you get your hands on, and even if you can get your hands on an SNES Classic, let's talk about the game and how it holds up. And Dross is back, having survived the destruction of his base on Venom. He lost an eye, but that just fuels his anger. He sends an army through the Lilat system, with all of his forces heading for Corneria. General Pepper sends the Star Fox team to take Andros head on, because, as usual, the Cornerian army is completely useless. Unlike in the first game, you are not relegated to only playing Fox McCloud. You can pick two members of the team, with different ship designs at your disposal. Fox and Falco fly the most traditional army, like in the first game, armed with Nova Bombs. Peppy and Slippy have, instead of bombs, a repair cycle and better shielding system. There are two more members to the Star Fox team, Miyu, the Lynx, and Faye, the Poodle. Faye and Miyu have another version of the R-Wing, armed with twin blasters and extra shielding for a special weapon. However, they are much more frail ships and can't take too much cannon fire. You can pick up additional special weapons and shielding as you destroy enemies. Every R-Wing can convert to a ground mode in this one, which you use on every planet and battleship level. It takes a bit of time to get used to, particularly with having to turn using the L and R buttons, but once you adjust, it adds a fun new dimension to the gameplay. Visually, Star Fox 2 is incredible for the Super Nintendo. It looks rudimentary for anyone who's played games in the last 20 years, easily bested by even the N64, but if you can put your nostalgia goggles on nice and tight, you can appreciate the visuals for what they are. I'd say on a visual level, it surpasses Star Fox 1, particularly because it is much more vibrant and colorful. Still suffers from their graphics problem though, you know the one where the bad guy can shoot at you even though you can't see it yet and then you get closer then you can see it. The Star Fox fans know what I'm talking about. One of the big leaps for Star Fox 2 though is the gameplay. It handles very differently than the first game. Star Fox was an on-rail game, so that meant the R-Wing was always moving forward. When you miss something, that was it. There was really only one way to finish the stage and the trick was to survive and shoot enemies. Here, it really goes for something more 3D. You can circle around your environments basically like the all-range mode in Star Fox 64. Also, there's no set path for you in the overworld either. You can attack the enemy bases in whatever order you choose. The key is strategy. You have to be mindful because you carry your damage with you between levels. But your main objective is to protect Corneria, which can take some damage, but you lose if the meter reaches 100%. Andros will be shooting missiles 
enemy fighters, and battleships with planet blasting cannons, so it's up to you to determine which enemies are the best to destroy first. There is a defense satellite which will help you out on occasion. I'd call it mostly useless, but when it helps you, you really come to appreciate it. Watch out though. On the harder runs, viruses are sent to commandeer the satellite, and it can be turned against Corneria. It just, it just makes me so mad. And while you're in combat, events are still happening in real time in the overworld. So if you spend too long fighting a boss, a missile can hit Corneria and you can't do anything about it. So time management is key. Andros saves some special baddies for you though. While you're trying to thwart his plans, he sends command ships and, wouldn't you know it, Star Wolf after you. Yep, the actual debut of the Star Wolf team is here. Andrew, Pigma, Leon, and Wolf are all accounted for. And they're just and they're just jerks. Wait, wait, is that Andrew? It is is it is it weird that I actually like this one better? I mean just look at him. He's so cute. Aww. So I'm sure the question that's burning in all of you right now is How is it? Because none of this even matters if the game's no fun. And that's not even an easy question to answer because I feel like how much enjoyment you get out of the game depends entirely on how you're playing it. Let me explain. First, heads up for the people who are used to the smooth and sexy controls of Star Fox 64. This game doesn't handle as well. Keep in mind that this is the groundwork for the Star Fox Golden Boy. The SNES just couldn't handle it nearly as well as the next system could, and you can feel it. But also, because of the 3D nature of the game, I actually feel it doesn't control as well as the first Star Fox either. I guess that's what comes with a game that's this ambitious. As such, it's much harder to figure out where you're shooting. It would be next to impossible, if not for the very necessary help of a locking system. So thank you for that, at least. So my initial reaction to the game was disappointment. My first time through it, I selected normal mode, and I found myself more or less bumbling through the game and still somehow winning. It was not a rewarding feeling to be blowing through the game while still not really knowing what I'm doing. The boss fights were unfulfilling and anticlimactic, and the only one that actually worked for me was the battle with Andros. The whole strategy and structure of the game just seemed like it was well-intentioned, but flimsy in delivery. Not to give up so easily, I played in hard mode, and it all made sense. I finally got the hang of the controls, and the challenge level was significantly improved. There were more battleships and enemy bases, and the strategy aspect actually became very important for victory. The levels required more problem solving, and the boss battles were much more challenging. This is the recommended mode for your optimum Star Fox 2 experience. Then... And then there's expert mode. Or as I like to call it, ah! After scoring exceptionally well at hard mode, I thought I was ready for expert mode, but I, I just don't know if anyone can be ready for expert mode. Every planet gets a base. The fighters are harder, there are more missiles than ever, and the Star Wolf team becomes a lethal threat that can deflect anything you throw at them. Expert mode will chew you up and spit you out. I try to take out the bases, but he just sends more fighters. The satellite would help, but it gets taken over by the viruses. I want to take out the viruses, but I get attacked by Pigma. I kill Pigma, but more missiles are launched. I attack the missiles, but Andros has sent out two more bosses. I need to destroy fighters, attacking Corneria. But now I'm surrounded by two bosses, another member of Star Wolf, and one of the battleships has just started charging his planet cannon. I cannot beat expert mode, and my attempts to do so have been frustrating at best, and emotionally crippling at worst. I feel like I need to go back and try again. Like if I could only get better, I could save the Lilat system. Uh, but who am I kidding? General Pepper is an idiot for thinking that two ships could take out an entire army. And he gets mad at me when missiles hit Corneria. Shut up, man. You get an R-wing and you try this. Like I'm not trying. Come on. But truth be told, this spike in difficulty is distressing because... Well, in the first Star Fox, there was a hard path and you could take it and it was very challenging. I always felt like if I could just sharpen my skills a bit more, it could be beaten. And I eventually did beat it. But frankly, here, I don't know if I could do better. The game literally throws too much at the player for anyone to handle. You could still be in one battle and Star Wolf could fly in and attack you more. I tried adjusting my strategy and making my routes more efficient, but there's always a point where I hit a wall because there's just too much and I feel like I'll never be able to beat it, and it's not my fault. There are a few things that I think they could have done that would have made it more fair. Twin blasters are so rare to come by in this game, 
and I've never even seen them in expert mode. If those were more available, I think that could go a long way because I've never enjoyed using a single blaster. I feel weak and useless and it does no good in intense combat. I also think that the main rush, about halfway through, is honestly too much and if it was just a bit more staggered, that would probably do the trick. But two bosses, two battleships, a star wolf, and a handful of fighters, it's just so overwhelming. I mean, that's basically it. Other than the controls being a little bit sticky, these are just side effects of an older system with limitations, right? But to withhold valuable power-ups and overwhelm you with enemies feels like pretty mean game design. For nitpicks, there are occasional graphical glitches, but again, it was really pushing the SNES to its limits. The music isn't bad, but it's not nearly as good as the first Star Fox, which is one of my favorite Nintendo soundtracks. Though, I do like that music cue when you open up a door to the core. It's a nice little touch. But the best music cue is when you're going into battle with Andros. They give a brilliant and suspenseful throwback to the first game. It's a nice, subtle touch. I also prefer the funny little voice clips of the first game. These ones just sound a little more generic. And the characters don't have as many interesting things to say while you're playing. And I suspect this won't be a problem with the final release on the SNES Classic, but at the end of the game, on my copy, the music finishes long before the bad guy showcase ends. Leaves a very awkward amount of time without a soundtrack. In summary, Star Fox 2 is actually a really fun game, and a worthy entry into the Star Fox franchise. I bet it would have been a huge hit for the Super Nintendo, even though it was late in the console's life cycle. But I can also understand why they shelved it in retrospect, considering how Star Fox 64 played. And I wouldn't change anything about Star Fox 64. Despite my grievances, the game does keep calling me back. I don't know if I'll ever beat Expert Mode, but the fact that I keep wanting to try and tackle it again means that the game is well designed. In the end, I gotta give Star Fox 2 4 out of 5 R-Wings. It's a great game for your collection. See you next time.